There are parts of Ukraine that are virtually unrecognizable amid this war, but there are other parts of the country where life seems to be going on as normal. But no matter where you live, no one knows what is going to happen next and where Putin and the Russian forces will strike. Melania Podoyak is a civic activist and media consultant. She is in Lviv, Ukraine right now. And joining us live, uh, you have been watching this unfold really before your eyes. I want to start with this horrible image of the hospital um, being blown up in Mariupol today. It was hard for all of us to see that. What was it like for you to watch a civilian target like a hospital with mothers and babies and small children being targeted? I mean, it's heartbreaking. It's infuriating. It's it's inhumane. Uh, we're on a point of no return at this point. Um, I have spoken to many of people who are serving in the military right now and they have described it as something that will make them they would that would make them you know uh not willing to take russia's hostage if you know what i mean mm -hmm. the last time you and i spoke melania you were under a stairwell there were air raids going on uh, take me through what you've encountered in the last week two weeks um a lot of things have changed uh, since then obviously a threat of of shelling or bombing in in Lviv where I am it's relatively low I guess it's a bit too dangerous for Russian uh, planes to fly all over here that's just my assessment so they don't shell Lviv um, anymore um, uh, I mean except for that one thing that happened during the first day but um, everything has changed the um, the, the amount of refugees who are um, coming to leave uh, either to stay or just uh, pass by and go to different countries has changed our lifestyle quite a bit. Also, it, it has taken a toll economically. Um, so it has been, it has been, everything has changed since then. I'm not under a stairwell anymore, but it doesn't really mean that it gets better. Mm -hmm. I spoke, Melania, earlier with a woman who's a professor in Kyiv. She got out of Kyiv, but many of her students still there fighting. Um, and, and she was worried about her brother, who is essentially on the front lines, and he doesn't have a bulletproof vest. And so she said they anticipate it could take up to a week. Um, for those who are ready to fight, are they equipped to do so at this point? Your friends, your family, those you know who are in battle? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, everyone who is in active combat is supplied with everything they need or most of what they need. The, the issue of logistics is still a bit at hand because Russians, uh, it is dangerous to um, uh, to transfer things to troops at this point. Like, for instance, Chernihiv, it's, been, it's, it's a location of, that is difficult to reach at this point. However, as far as I'm concerned, everybody who is uh, taking part in the active battle is equipped. There's this issue of, you know, we are willing to um, equip all of our military at the same time, both in the East and the West and South. However, um, uh, still, there is a matter of priorities so those troops who are uh, actually getting actively shot at get supplied first mm -hmm. that has been the principle that our commanders have been working at and i think that makes a lot of sense we're still waiting for those uh, procurements to come through from uh, countries of europe and whatnot so it's still a matter of you know a matter of logistics but i think we're dealing uh, our military is dealing very well, even in the situation it is at at this point. So mm. we're still working on a lot of things. Incredibly well. I'm curious, how do you get your information? Where are locals getting their news and updates on the ground fight? Well, everybody that I know who's here, uh, we're just paying extra good attention to the messages sent out by uh, general staff, by president, by our government. So they have been incredibly informative and um, active at uh, explaining the situation to us. So, I mean, news just, I mean, news have been also, um, I mean, I just think that every Ukrainian, including like journalists and whatnot, they understand the gravity and the importance of the situation. So there hasn't been much um you know fake news in the reports and whatnot a kind of this situation where ukrainians came together including media yeah so i mean we're every as long as the information in the media coincides with what the government says we can rely on it so and that has been largely the source of everything mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Real quick before I let you go, we've seen some incredible images amidst the destruction today of, you know, I saw an orchestra in, in Kyiv playing some music calling for the no-fly zone. Um, what does that do to morale um, when, you hear, when you hear these people stop everything they're doing, some even laying down their guns for a moment of levity um, to provide a, a little bit of hope in some, some serious darkness? Well, I think that's necessary. It's the same way that we're happy every time we hear about a baby being born in a bomb shelter. Um, I wish I wish we didn't have that. I wish these things weren't happening, including, I mean, the orchestra is very nice and stuff. I just think people need it at this point. If Ukrainians feel lonely sometimes, and that has largely to do with the fact that there are still there are still discussions in the West about whether you know to help Ukraine, how to help Ukraine. Ukraine has certain requests that not everybody's willing to fulfill. There's also a threat of you know uh, nuclear accidents in um, uh, Chernobyl and then in uh, other areas. So yeah. um, I think people need that. I mean, as I said, it's the same way we're happy about every baby being born in a bomb shelter. It's kind of warped, but it's the reality we live in. It is. All of this is very warped, Melania. Um, hey, stay safe. We appreciate you taking a little bit of time. I know you're tired uh, to talk to us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.